Hey, I'm Ryan Muncy with Fuel the Pursuit. And in this video, if you can see me behind this pile of stuff, I'm going to share with you everything that is in my pack for a late season um, November elk hunt. All right, so let's dive right in. Uh, I wanna start clearing some of this stuff out. I'm getting a little claustrophobic behind this pile. So um, first and foremost, you know, my basic pack setup for an elk hunt, whether it's archery in September or late season rifle in November, um, is basically gonna be the same. What I wanna highlight in this video um, are gonna be the differences. So, you know, right away, I've got a puffy coat and puffy pants. Uh, so these are my insulation layers. Um, these are always in my pack, even in uh, a September archery hunt. These are going to be in my pack somewhere. Um, these are from Stone Glacier. They pack down super small, but together they maybe weigh, you know, two pounds at most, and they just don't take up much room in my pack at all. Um, when we hunt out west, we have to be prepared for any kind of weather extremes. I know last year uh, there were places in Colorado within a three day period that went from 90 degrees to snow on the ground. Um, so, you know, for me, minimal space that they do take up and the minimal weight that they add is worth being prepared. Um, so, you know, these are always in my pack. So the next piece is, um, this is my favorite base layer for late season hunts. Uh, this is a Merino base layer. Um, side rant tangent we could do a whole other video on this I'm a heavy sweater um, so moisture management moisture control is a huge uh, point of emphasis and focal point for me um, so merino base layers are absolutely my favorite no matter what time of year it is the only exception to that would be super hot and early season um, but this is late season so um, I like this piece a lot. This is this sawtooth hybrid from First Light. Um, the Merino itself is a 300. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the all that means, but you know, a lot of times when we're looking at a Merino, you're seeing like a 125 to a 145 for a base layer, something around 200 to 210 for like a mid layer. Um, this is 300 and it actually has down fill um, in the, the chest and upper arm area. Um, so if you can see here, so you got the hood, it's a full zip. So you got some down here on the upper arms and on the chest. It has pockets, which I love. Um, the back, however, does not have down, which is great because, you know, like I said, I'm a heavy sweater. The pack is on our back. Um, so this is really the only thing that I will hike in, uh, meaning like that's the only layer I wear. So, you know, it could be 20 degrees. Uh, I've even hiked in like 10, 15 degrees snowing um, and I'm wearing this. And when I'm moving, I'm fine. When I get to where we're going, um, I will add, um, I've got a, a hoodie in here and then I've got the insulation layer that I just showed you. And I've got a rain jacket that always stays in here too. So I have all my layers, but um, this is the most versatile piece um, and, and best base layer that I have found for late season hunts and, and super cold weather. Um, again, because moisture management is a, a big concern for me, um, I like a very thin merino glove, um, and that's just a base layer merino glove. Uh, these are 200 or 210, um, but I'll wear that just to kind of knock the edge off and kind of keep from getting frostbite. But especially if I'm hiking, you know, I want to be able to dump body heat. Um, I will also, uh, a lot of times, if it's not super cold, I will put hot hands in my pockets and actually hike without gloves. Um, you know, if I can have my rifle either, you know, just a sling to where I'm not holding that cold metal, or if I've actually got it attached to my pack, you know, my hands aren't on the cold metal. So I can either, um, you know, go hands in my pockets to warm them up or keep them out and just completely dump heat. But I really like the Merino base layer gloves for that. Um, and then of course, um, that's not gonna be enough uh, when you stop and, and stop moving. So uh, I, I really like these Kuyu, I think they're like the glassing glomets or, or North Star, I don't even know which ones anymore. Um, but 
I really like these, um, super warm. I actually have to take them off occasionally um, because I get so hot, my hands will actually start sweating in them. So, um, okay, so footwear. Um, I always take two different pairs of boots on every hunt. Um, late season is gonna be no exception to that. Um, I am a uh, minimalist and, and footwear kind of snob. So I will only wear, whether we're talking hunting or not, I'm only wearing, um, shoes that are designed for um, natural uh, or natural footwear, minimalist shoes, whatever you want to call them. So I'm talking wide toe box, zero drop from heel to toe. Um, those are, are just non-negotiables for me. Um, so my favorite brands uh, are Vivo Barefoot. Um, these are actually zero barefoot shoes. Um, not my favorite brand, but this pair of shoes is actually a really good one for late season hunts. Uh, I say not my favorite brand because they have sizing issues and durability issues. Um, you can see I've even got some Gorilla Tape on the back of these uh, where the Hirachi strap is kind of busted. Um, and I've only worn these for, you know, maybe 30 days um, over the course of two seasons. These are insulated, um, so it's 200 grams of, of insulation um, and they're fully waterproof. These things are super lightweight, um, super flexible. Um, I do not want a stiff shank or, or stiff sole. I want to be able to move. I want to be able to feel the ground. Um, like I said, my feet, you know, they're used to being natural and moving and operating the way that feet should um, and are supposed to. So I don't want to give that up. Um, these do have some really good insoles to prevent, um, you know, your feet from getting cold when you're standing on snow. Um, but um, like I said, they're, they're waterproof, they're insulated. Um, one of the problems, again, that I have with an insulated boot, especially if I'm moving, is that I will sweat. And then when you stop, um, you know, your feet get cold. So uh, 200 grams of insulation is the most insulation that I will use. The other pair of boots that I always bring um, will also be waterproof, um, but they will not be insulated. They're a pair of leather uh, Vivo Barefoot uh, trackers and uh, they do have that same insole that protects, uh, it's a thermo insole that protects from uh, standing on frozen ground. Um, even if they're not insulated, when I'm moving, because they're waterproof, they don't breathe as well. Um, even on like a Gore-Tex shoe, I have that problem. Um, so a big component of my um, late season hunting and, and footwear is the boot dryer. Um, I have the Graxol uh, backpacking boot dryer for earlier season. Um, on this particular hunt, we will be staying in a cabin. So my entire setup is different for this hunt because we're not backpacking, we're not living out of a tent. So every single night we will be back in a cabin, every morning we're starting from the cabin. Um, so my day pack is essentially, or, or my pack for these hunts will essentially be day packs for um, day hunts. Um, and so I'm not using the backpacking boot dryer on this hunt. I'm actually using the plug-in. Um, I like this one because it has the car adapter, you know, if I have to do it in the truck, uh, but also plugs into the cabin um, at night. And so, like I said, I always take two pairs and I usually end up alternating pairs from one day to the next because between sweat and snow, um, sometimes it is hard to get them all the way dry uh, from one night to the next. Um, and usually that's mostly sweat. They are waterproof and, and I really don't have issues with, you know, water getting in. It's just, that's how much my feet sweat. So um, socks are gonna be a huge issue um, or a huge part of this component for me. Um, I like toe socks. We've done another video on that somewhere. Uh, maybe it was on TikTok, but uh, with toe socks, they actually help us prevent blisters because um, blisters come from friction where you, know, you have one surface rubbing against each other. So if you think about wearing a mitten, right, your hands are gonna be smashed, your fingers are gonna be smashed together like this. Um, but if we're wearing toe socks, it's kind of like wearing gloves, where you have that dexterity in your fingers or your toes. And so that actually helps prevent um, you know, blisters on your feet, but it also helps your feet move and function like they should. So um, I always wear MGNG as the brand, but they make some really great merino wicking uh, fabrics that are um, the toe socks as well. So that's a big part of the footwear stuff for me. Um, of course, gaiters, um, these have been used, so I'm getting dirt and stuff everywhere, but, uh, I like the Kuyu. These are the Yukon, the heavier ones, not the like backpacking ones. The weight difference is only like two ounces per, I think it goes from like four to six ounces per gaiter. Um, when you step that up to the Yukon, 
it's, I don't notice it. It's negligible. Um, these are absolutely bomb proof. My favorite gators ever. Uh, and I've worn three or four different pair. Um, I've got the orange hat on for this video today because um, it is rifle season. It will be public land. Uh, this will be third rifle in Colorado. And if you've ever been a part of that hunt, it's like a pumpkin patch out there. So uh, I have no problem dressing like a traffic cone. Um, but of course, that's got to be in my pack. So um, I've got the uh, orange vest uh, and the orange hat. Colorado requires head and torso. Uh, I know there are some states where the, the hat is not re required, um, but definitely just make sure you're looking at the regulations there uh, in your state. These are the, um, uh, for, for the puffy coat and the puffy pant, so you get an idea of how small they pack down. Um, stuff sacks, that's the word I was not being able to come up with. But these um, will be in my pack here. Um, I have a jet boil, uh, this is the mini mo, and I don't know if this is actually gonna make the cut or not. It's definitely gonna make the flight, and it may stay in the cabin. Um, but like I said, since we are day hunting, I don't know that I'm actually going to take this. Um, probably going to be leaving it at the cabin, um, but you never know. So in the event that we decide to take it, you know, you can get something to drink hot. You can melt snow, um, whatever. So um, let's see. So there will always be um, a, a water bladder in here. Um, I've got shooting sticks on this side as well as trekking poles. Um, those are going to be standard. They'll be with me every day. Uh, I usually don't use the trekking poles unless we're packing something out, um, but they don't weigh that much. It's nice to have them. Um, something else that I always take, um, I take it on archery hunts as well, and it's nice to have um, just to keep yourself off the ground, but it's crucial for those late season hunts when you're glassing. Uh, this is just a, I call it a butt pad. Do not go on Amazon and search butt pad. You will find padded underwear. And I didn't know that people actually wore those, but they do. Um, so just this little uh, glassing pad, I did get it on Amazon. I do not remember how I found it or what to search for, but don't search for butt pad. Um, so that's always in there. Um, this is a, it's the Kuyu pack. This is the 6,000. Um, if I was gonna be backpacking and you know staying overnight, trying to fit a tent and camp and sleep systems in here, I would have a larger pack. I would use the 7,800. Um, but if you're not familiar with the Kuyu packs, they have this outer uh, zip. And the idea here is that if, it, if it's an archery hunt, your bow can go right here. Um, if it's a rifle hunt, I have um, a, a sling. So you can either put your rifle dead on the back here or on one side so that it's quickly accessible there. Um, I actually usually just end up carrying it. I just, you know, I have a lightweight mountain rifle. Um, and it's just easier to have it in my hand. But with these packs, uh, you, have, you have these outer um, zippers that you're able to access without having to um, undo all your straps and compression straps on the sides. And so I keep my rain gear in here on this side. Uh, you saw my rain pants. Um, I have the Stone Glacier M5s on this side. Uh, I have the rain coat. Um, this is a, it's a Kuyu Chugach, I believe. Um, I also keep gloves in here. So those down gloves, the Merino gloves will go in here. I also have a third pair, um, I believe in redundancies. And so that third pair is uh, their Gore-Tex Windstopper. They're from Sitka. Um, so uh, the two smaller pair will actually probably go in here. And then the glassing, the down gloves will go you know, in my pack because I really only need those when we stop and, and sit still. Um, the rest of the stuff in my pack, um, just the same essentials as always. Um, if you've seen any of these pack dump videos, it'll be the same stuff. So there's always a med kit in there. Um, there's a tourniquet in the med kit, um, as well as the same stuff as always uh, that everybody else talks about. Uh, these are my game bags. Again, this is Graxaw. Uh, there are eight bags in here, and this will hold uh, 340 pounds or more of meat. Um, I love having those. They're super lightweight. I've tried other game bags, but this takes up so much less space and it weighs a lot less. Um, I do keep this Stone Glacier uh, drive pack or load cell drive bag in here uh, for emergencies, for you never know. 
Uh, maybe it gets, you know, you get rained on, stuff gets wet. I don't want my whole pack getting wet, whatever. Um, or, you know, for a cape, um, you know, on a successful pack out. Um, this is the kill kit. Um, so I've got extra paracord in here, um, a goat retractable, or not retractable, but the replaceable blade goat knife, um, tags, a pin, um, electrical tape. Um, I've got an extra snack in there just in case. And I don't know, there may be something else in there. Um, and I believe that does it for the pack. Uh, it's a rifle hunt, so I got two other guys that are going with us, so I'll share these, but uh, these are just uh, earplugs. So I actually will wear this around my neck, and then if it's time for somebody to take a shot, uh, I will actually put those in um, because I feel like I'm going deaf anyway. Uh, so I'm just trying to protect my hearing any way I can. Um, the lid on this, I will actually take off, um, and this will stay at the cabin. So that's kind of like my, my camp stuff, um, toiletries, um, phone chargers. I'll actually take one of the phone chargers, uh, power source, um, out with us in the field. Um, I'm drawing a blank on the name. Um, the other thing that's in here that I will swap and put into this pack, um, like windproof, waterproof, uh, matches, lighters, um, those things, those types of kind of essentials like survival stuff, uh, will also stay in the pack. Um, in the front here, I keep, I wear contacts, so I keep an extra lens case, contact solution, headlamps. Uh, I'll have two, maybe three headlamps in here, spoon, uh, Garmin inReach, um, some smart caffeine, um, cause I don't mess with coffee when we're out there. I talked about that in one of our food videos. Um, food will be, um, you know, check out our other food video. It'll basically be the same setup. Um, I'm under two pounds a day between 3,800 and 4,000 calories a day. Uh, on a keto setup for this, it's just so much easier to keep weight down and calories up with that higher fat content. Um, I'll have probably only four meals per day um, in here. Uh, I usually eat six, and so I'll have one at the cabin before we go. Um, that one will usually be a protein shake so that I don't have to worry about water and a shaker um, in here and while we're out uh, like hunting and you know conserving water and, and dealing with all that out of the pack. Um, and then I'll usually have the last meal of the day back at the cabin um, for that night. It'll probably be in my pack just in case, but you know, odds are if it's getting dark around five, uh, we're home, you know, in plenty of time to have that last meal back at the cabin. Um, that's actually part of what we do is, you know, every night somebody cooks dinner for the rest of the crew. So um, I'll have it just in case, but you know, usually not eating it or needing it. So um, that is the late season, November, elk hunting pack setup. Um, the gun is not shown. Like I said, I have a mountain rifle. Um, one thing that might be helpful to see, like I said, we've got the, the shooting sticks. I have a bipod for that, uh, but I'm not gonna pack it. I'm not gonna use it. Where we're hunting, uh, the ground is just, there, there's sage everywhere. There's buck brush or scrub oak. Um, the odds of being able to get prone and get a shot are not good. If they are, I would just be shooting off of my pack like you see it here. Um, if I need more clearance, then I'm either gonna stand the pack up vertically, um, you know, like so. And if that's the case, then I'm just gonna go to the shooting sticks anyway. Um, and then the other thing I was gonna show you, this is a really cool uh, piece of gear. This goes on the shoulder strap of your backpack. Um, I know one of the biggest pieces of, of frustration that we have if we've got a rifle in that sling that it falls off of our, our shoulder strap. So this clips onto uh, your backpack strap and it has this little kind of hook here and your rifle sling will sit like this and it won't fall off. Uh, so you're not constantly having to readjust that um, rifle sling. Um, so um, this was on Amazon. This is Creed Outdoors, it's called a sling saddle. Uh, so that is, uh, that's it, that's the pack, that's the kit. Um, if you've got any questions, let us know down in the comments. 
Um, if you've got some kind of late season essential that you didn't hear us say, uh, let us know down in the comments. Of course, like this video. Um, that's going to help YouTube show you more of the stuff that you want to see. And of course, subscribe to the channel. Uh, hit that notification bell so that you get an alert every time we put out a new video. And thanks a lot. We'll talk to you soon.